everyone, it's Ross, and uh, today I want to show you guys kind of what's ripening in the, the fig forest here. We have lots of new varieties that I've never tried. Uh, some crops have already finished and put out lots of fruit, like my Ronde de, Bar my Ronde de Bardot. Sorry, guys. You can see this is pretty much drying up on the tree right now. This is one of the last ones. We've had really hot weather here. Uh, there's only really about five or you know four or five left. You can see down in here. So really nice to know that you can get pretty much all of the Ronde de Bordeaux crop well before September, at least uh, probably before September 15th, you know mid September, which is really really valuable here because that's about when the weather really starts to turn. Right after Labor Day, we start getting really poor weather. Uh, you know, my black Madeira hasn't started ripening yet, which really stinks, but we do have my Italian 258 ripening now, and boy, oh boy, does this fig look good, and we're going to put, we're going to do a separate video on this fig, because I know you guys deserve it. Um, I really want to show you guys as much as I can about this variety. Uh, another variety I'm very excited to try for the first time ever is Raspberry Latte. This one has a very, very intense berry flavor. We're getting there, guys. We're getting there. We're going to get rain on Friday. Today's Wednesday, so we may actually get some, probably pick a bunch of figs tomorrow in preparation of that rain. Depending on when it rains on Friday, I'm probably going to pick a bunch of these. This is my Canadria that I've been documenting every day to try to get you guys a little bit more info on when to pick that fig and when to pick a fig in general. But we also have Smith down here that's ripening. Isn't that beautiful? Um, so my Smith's ripening, my Italian 258, my Raspberry Latte. I have a an LSU Tiger. Excuse me guys, I have an LSU Tiger back here that's ripening. That one's in a 30 gallon size pot. We also have, I think, Col de Don Blanc, believe it or not, ripening really in the 1st of September. I mean, that's pretty impressive that this fig down here is actually starting to swell, I think. I just noticed it today that it turned color, but none of my black Madeiras have uh, started ripening. Definitely seems a bit later than most varieties. And then we have here Cavalieri, which is the same thing. I think this variety also may be a bit later than most varieties, which is really a, kind of a bad thing here. But I guess that's it for this section. Really excited to try some really high quality figs in the next couple days. Um, we also have ripening, and these are some of these figs, guys, I've never eaten before. You know, this is another one down here. This one's called Encanto. And uh, no one has ripened that thing. I don't know a single person that has ripened that outside of California, outside of the wasp land. So it's really nice to know that that one is indeed common. It is definitely for sure ripening. We also have my Azores Dark really putting on a lot of figs. And I think we're going to pick one of these. And I'm going to eat this today. Maybe not in this video. But you can see it's really starting to get kind of shriveled. The cracking is really there. The neck... The whole thing is really soft, so we're going to pick this, I'm going to set this one down. I think I'll do this in a separate video for you guys. I'm going to compare this to a fig I'm going to show you guys at the end of this video. So one of my better figs, we're going to compare that to something else. We've also had a fig here that I never filmed, but it's called uh, GM175. This one has also ripened for me. Um, very, very good fig. It reminds me a lot of Sultane. For those of you who know what Sultane is, it's a French variety that's really good. Uh, what else do we have ripening? There's so many trees in this little area that it's hard to, or it's easy to overlook something. But let's see, what else? Well, one that's not ripening just yet but does seem like a later ripening variety is my Delsen Wami Grand. Really pretty figs, even though they're not ripe. Isn't that gorgeous? 
and this tree is a Pons variety that's quite late. It has a really good reputation of being very tasty. We also have in here, this is White Triana. And White Triana is very similar to Canadria that I showed you guys in the beginning of the video. These still have quite a bit of time to go, but it's really nice that these will all fruit, even this one here will fruit before I take this air layer off. I'm giving that tree to a friend at Staten Island this year. So before September 15th, most of the fruits on this tree will be, uh, will be ripened. We also have behind it, Dr. Gawadi. My friend Craig gave me this tree this year as a very small tree. It grew very well and put out lots of figs. We also ripened our entire uh, crop of yellow niches. There wasn't really that many to, to show for. But uh, we also have right next to it, Brandon Street Unknown. This is a really interesting fig in my mind. Similar to Suwadi, which Suwadi has already finished ripening. Um, there is a few more figs left on the tree here of Suwadi. And um, those will ripen probably sometime in late September, if I had to guess. Maybe early, maybe mid-September, but... It's really nice to see that this thing is putting out two crops for me, similar to how my Azores Dark is. You know, the first Azores Dark ripened on July 1st. We're now getting more of them now, September 1st, and we'll probably have some that may even ripen in uh, October 1st. So really cool how that tree has been able to produce for me this year. We also have uh, Hated the Argentiles putting out something. This fig is definitely swelling. And then the next week we'll get to taste that and we also have LSU Champagne which is putting out boatloads of figs absolute boatloads they're really coming in now you know September is the time guys here in this climate for a lot of figs to start coming in um, same thing with my Mary Lane seedless it'd be very interesting to be able to compare Mary Lane seedless to LSU Champagne I know that Mary Lane seedless is quite a tasty honey fig and so is LSU Champagne but I think Mary Lane Seedless edges it out just slightly but I want to know how Mary Lane Seedless holds up to the rain because LSU Champagne performs so so well that for me it's my top honey fig so it'll be cool to see what Mary Lane Seedless does we also ripened our entire Detrace Displace crop there's nothing left on here same thing with my uh, this fig here, what's this one called? Rasty's Persian Unknown. There was only one fig on that one, but uh, very, very early. As well as my Petite Albique is also quite early, I would say. More mid-season. You can see I've got a slug getting to these. I'm not sure where the slug is, but if I see it, I'm gonna kill it. But you can see there's a huge amount of figs back in there. Really, really tasty variety. It's, it is definitely one of my favorites. Very underrated, often overlooked. It's easily in my top 10, the Violet de Bordeaux types. Let's see, what else do we have? Oh, here's Olympian. So we have Olympian, this thing is huge. This one's ripening, this is an English brown turkey. And then it's, uh, it's partner in crime, another English brown turkey that I grafted onto Olympian. Well, sh this should be ripening soon. We have the Dal Oso Belfiore ripening here. Quite a pretty fig, I must say. And then we also have down in here DN Manel, which is one of the prettiest figs I think I own. I have a feeling this is the same thing as uh, Grise de Saint Jean, which is a really popular French fig. And uh, people have said really great things about DN Manel. What else do we have going on over here, guys? Well, not a whole lot from what I'm looking at. Oh, we do have Fico Nita, which is putting out its last couple figs. Really not that impressed with this variety. It's one that I have not showed you guys, but it's very pretty. It's blue. It's legitimately blue. Um, but you know what, just because it's blue doesn't mean it's good. We also have down here Calderwood Unknown, which in my mind is actually more of an improved Celeste, at least what I was given. 
still more testing needs to be done, but uh, for now, it reminds me very much so of an Impruse Celeste. What else do we have going on here, guys? We still have a whole side of the yard I haven't showed you. This fig here it looks like it's swelling today. That's really beautiful to see. This is Spayi, an Israeli variety that my friend Eli gave me. I'll get to try that fig for the first time. Uh, I think I may have had some in Israel when I was there. I took a trip there for vacation, and that was a really beautiful country. I enjoyed my time there very, very much. Here is Red Libya. And Red Libya, the first one I had off of this tree, was maybe 15 days ago or so, and it was the only fig I've had so far that has split. But you can see this one's also very pretty. Really interesting colors in here. And the thing is quite soft, I must say. But I'm waiting for the neck to get a little bit more soft. And I kind of want it to crack a little bit. But I don't see any some, you know, some cracking. Maybe it's too early. My red ruby has been putting out figs pretty consistently, still growing sideways for the most part. But there's not a whole lot left on this tree. Um, but I really like this variety, guys. I'm really a big fan. Uh, we also have LSU Tiger, another LSU Tiger tree, putting out some figs. Looks like we lost one. One of them must be on the ground behind this tree here. Let's see if we can find it. I wonder where it went. But you can see right here, here's a really beautiful one that we could, I guess, pick. But I want these figs, guys, to hang for a long time. I want to see what their real, real potential is with these. I'm going to have to look for this fig a little bit later, but I know for a fact there was two of them on here earlier today. <laughs> so it's on the ground somewhere. But the last fig I want to show you guys... Oh, wait, we have one more right here. This fig in here is called uh, Taramo Unknown. We planted this in a raised bed to see what would happen. Pretty young tree when I planted it, but you can see the figs are putting out quite nicely. Um, there wasn't that many fruits, but the tree grew an insane amount. So next year, if that tree survives, which seems unlikely, I'm more hopeful than, um, than positive on the whole situation. But if that one survives, I'll have plenty of fruit on it next year, so really not a huge loss. But the last fig I want to show you, last but not least, is brown turkey. For some reason, it's some of your favorites, but this one's quite soft. Oh, we dropped it. Brown turkey down. <laughs> ay, ay, ay. Anyway. I'm going to eat this fig right now in a separate video. And I want to compare this brown turkey to my well-ripened Azores Dark. And uh, I think you'll be surprised in what happens. Maybe you won't. But anyway, everyone, this was the video of what's going on here in my fig forest, in my fig orchard. Uh... Yeah, more to come, I guess, on each individual variety. If I think it really is going to show some potential, I'll make a video on it. Get you guys interested more into these different varieties. Okay? All right, guys. Take care, and I'll talk to you all soon. Bye-bye.